Good evening, Philippines, and we are back to give you the very latest on the, uh, the developing tropical storm over to the east of Mindanao. This is Tropical Storm Auring with international name Tutian. Okay, so that's the pronunciation uh, since the name, uh, which spells D-U-J-U-A-N or Dujuan is not the right pronunciation since it's a Chinese name. So it mean it must be pronounced as Tutian. Okay, so it means it's the uh, Chinese word for azalea. It's a kind of tree. Actually, it's a famous tree in the world. So uh, this uh, update is for this uh, Thursday evening, February 18, and let's begin now with our latest information on this tropical system. Right now, it's uh, almost stationary to the east of uh, Davao Oriental, still here, trying to survive some hostile environment because of strong upper-level winds. Actually, it's still moderate, but in the next 24 to 48 hours, it will uh, intensify further uh, the uh, upper-level winds, so it might disrupt some development of this uh, tropical storm. So it has winds already of 65 to 85 kph, and it's moving very slowly at uh, a speed of 5 to 7 kph towards the west-northwest or northwest. And we are going to observe this in the coming days. Because until now, the three, four, up to five day forecast remains uncertain on when it, uh, what area in the Philippine Islands will it make landfall. So let's hope that it will weaken rapidly as it traverses the Philippine Islands if there's no choice. And, uh, if we look at our, uh, zoom in satellite animation of this storm, this is from windy.com. You can already see some surge of the northeast monsoon uh, affecting the Bicol region, Visayas. Actually, it's uh, the whole uh, portions of the Philippine Islands except for Mindanao. where in the uh, trough of this system. will continue to bring some cloudy conditions and possible showers, especially along the eastern sections of Mindanao. And uh, it's really, uh, uh, if you look at the uh, satellite uh, loop, it's not yet fully organized, just a blob of uh, cloudiness uh, surrounding its center. Actually, it's partially exposed. You can uh, clearly see here the uh, portion without a cloud bands because of the upper level winds. So this is our latest track, track number 3, issued around 5 p.m. this afternoon. So our track is a little uh, lower than the uh, previous one, which was last night, which shows a, pa a path between Panay and uh, Masbati, but now it's over to the south of Cebu uh, in the southern uh, Bohol come Sunday. So for the next two days, this will be the track of the storm. In the next two days, this is more uh, higher confidence because uh, most of the computer models shows this track, but when you reach day three, day four, and day five, it's becoming more uncertain because the computer models are moving farther away from each other. They're, they don't agree on where the storm will pass. And so it remains uncertain as of this time. Okay, now if we follow this track, if it happens, it will make landfall uh, between 2 to 3 a.m. or midnight of Sunday, February 21, over the southern part of uh, Surigao del Sur, uh, near Bislig. And it will traverse Caraga, passing uh, to, uh, over the northern part of uh, Agusan del Norte, and, and it will uh, exit the area of uh, Misamis uh, uh, Oriental. Uh, very near Cagayan de Oro, so expect some rainfall here beginning uh, uh, late Saturday throughout Sunday. And on the afternoon of February 21, Sunday, it will uh, uh, pass between uh, uh, Sikihor and uh, Bohol and make landfall over the southern part of, or southern tip of Cebu, then southern Negros. Then it will rapidly weaken into a 
tropical storm. By the way, uh, the forecast for the next 48 hours, it will strengthen to severe tropical storm status up to 95 kph, gusting to 120 kph. But once it makes landfall, it will be disrupted by the terrain of northern Mindanao. And the winds will uh, weaken rapidly to just a minimal or normal tropical storm strength. 75 to 95 kph once it moves over the whole sea and then after crossing southern negros moving into the sulu archipelago it might weaken into a uh, tropical depression uh, especially once it crosses the northern part of palawan or the northern tip of palawan on the afternoon of february 22 that's uh, that will be on monday so this forecast remains uh, uncertain Okay, so that's a big question mark. That's why we have the so-called, uh, uh, this is what been known as the cone of uncertainty for a possible shift either to the north or to the south of its track. So let's uh, stay tuned for the system in the coming days. Let's just focus on the, uh, let's just focus on the uh, two-day forecast because that's the, uh, real shot of most of the uh, tracking of the tropical cyclones around the world when it comes to uh, uh, confidence level it's much higher compared to uh, the three four or five day forecast so we are going to monitor this uh, but uh, the effects of the northeast monsoon and the strong high pressure area of uh, southern china will uh, disrupt further development of this uh, weather system so right now it's trying to survive because of the cold winds from the northeast monsoon since it's still February this is uh, one of the coldest months here in Asia and we expect some cooler conditions to prevail across the Philippine Islands especially this weekend once the system moves closer across or crosses the uh, northern part of Mindanao and Visayas come Sunday so this are all the tracks of uh, our ring from the various computer I mean the various uh, Asian agencies so our track at Typhoon 2000 is here to the south of the batch okay so we are more to the south because of we uh, take in consideration the uh, uh, track of uh, uh, the American model so if you look here uh, the American model is way down, okay, over the central Mindanao and over the southern part of Sulu Archipelago, but the rest of the batch is over the northern part of Visayas, in between uh, um, Panay and Basbate, and over uh, between uh, Calamian Group and Mindoro. So uh, our track will be some will be just here. Oh, sorry, so here. Okay. So if the track of the American model goes more up north, we are going to adjust the forecast track. We've been doing this for the past two years since we uh, started uh, uh, creating some forecast for weather Philippines during the past. So actually, it has a high accuracy rate. Or from 80, 80 to 90 percent when we do the tracking of uh, the past tropical cyclones affecting the Philippine Islands. So here's the uh, multi-model diagnostic comparison. This is the latest one as of 2 p.m. from uh, the uh, RAMBB of uh, the uh, NOAA. Okay, and uh, the intensity model forecast is no longer uh, higher. So it will uh, just be sticking between uh, 35 knots to uh, 65 knots. So it's way within the uh, tropical uh, storm status. So the uh, majority of the wind models suggest highest peak of between uh, 85 to 100 kilometers per hour before it traverses northern Mindanao and Visayas okay and it will rapidly weaken because of uh, land interaction with the circulation of this tropical storm
so this is what i mean most of the truck is um, slightly moving more to the west in response to a possible building of the ridge or high pressure that will trigger more monsoonal winds across the Philippine Islands. And also, this is uh, what we are looking at, the uh, upper level winds or the deep layer shear. So this is today. And as we move towards uh, February, let me see. February 19, 20, and 21, the upper level winds or the wind shear will start to uh, increase once again. So it will affect the uh, circulation of this tropical storm. And as we look at our oceanic heat content, nothing much, but you can see here that it will add more intensity for the, to, to the system since the uh, kilojoules of the oceanic heat content is around 50 to 75 kilojoules okay and uh, once it reaches northern Mindanao and Visayas it will be much cooler so further intensification will not be expected and if you look at our rainfall accumulation for the next three days until uh, Saturday we could expect some intense or extreme rainfall to occur across northern and eastern Mindanao as well as portions of eastern Visayas and also moderate to heavy rains over Cebu, the rest of eastern Visayas and portions of uh, Misamis Occidental including Misamis Oriental uh, so again the oro is not out of the picture and for the next five days until Monday the intense rainfall will move across central Visayas, affecting Cebu, uh, half of uh, uh, Negros, especially the northern part, and also uh, three-fourths of Panay Island. So it will affect also areas of Roa City. And uh, now, now it depends on the uh, track. If it moves more to the south, it will be uh, adjusted uh, the rainfall will be adjusted more to the south. So here in the Bicol region, it's the effect of the uh, northeast monsoon. So the rains will be more concentrated along the uh, coastal areas uh, like Portito and Camarini Sur, the coastal areas of Albay, Sosagon, and also the whole island of uh, Tanduanes and Camarini Norte. And the eastern sections of Luzon will have uh, possible moderate to heavy rainfall as well on and off with some gust winds of up to 65 kph due to the enhanced northeast monsoon. So expect that for the next five days, particularly or especially uh, between Mon uh, Sunday to uh, Monday. Okay, and before we leave you, here's the latest GovSat. Nothing, uh, nothing much to say. Uh, same situation since last night. Northeast monsoon across the whole of the Philippine Islands, except for Mindanao, where in uh, they are affected by the trough of uh, Auring, and the tail end has receded more to the north. And so far, that's it. That's the high pressure that uh, is blocking any northward movement of Auring for the next three days. So there you go. That's the latest, and we'll be returning again on Friday or tomorrow to give you more update on the uh, upcoming tropical storm or ring. From Typhoon 2000, this is Mike Powder reporting. Stay safe always. Be hashtag with a wiser. Hashtag Typhoon wiser. And thank you so much for watching our channel.